Uh, c'est un, un, uh, un ambiguïté uh, que je crois que c'est imp assez important uh, de savoir comment le, la politique étrangère américaine peut manipuler l'éthique, uh, peut manipuler l'éthique du nationalisme, uh, peut manipuler l'éthique religieuse, la croyance religieuse, pour l'intérêt de la politique uh, uh, étrangère américaine. Et, et, et aussi, aussi de poser la question « qu'est-ce que c'est l'intérêt de la politique euh, étrangère américaine ?» so, uh, cette, uh, cette conversation, le débat, la discussion aujourd'hui est autour de cette question uh, « uh, à, à qui ça sert les, la politique étrangère américaine ?» et « quelles sont les modalités uh, de cette politique ?» Uh, so, uh, how does America use ethics uh, to manipulate other populations, and in what interest uh, it, is, uh, it manipulates uh, these ethical ties and convictions, these duties that uh, people hold uh, and feel strongly about? Uh, un des, des, des auteurs qui m'a influencé beaucoup en ce sujet uh, d'éthique et de stratégie est Anthony Wilden, professeur de communication à Simon Fraser in uh, Western Canada. The Rules Are No Game and War, Peace, Men and Women are two books. Uh, ils, ils sont sur la table, les livres d'Anthony Wilden, vous pouvez consulter. Uh, parmi autres choses, uh, Anthony Wilden uh, essayait d'analyser la stratégie et la tactique. Uh, quelles sont les différences? What is the difference between strategy and tactics? And he says quite simply that strategy is knowing what you want, and tactics is knowing how to get it. La stratégie est de savoir ce que vous voulez. Et la tactique est de savoir comment obtenir ce que vous voulez. So uh, he, is, uh, he goes on logically in this uh, very beginning to discuss uh, a, the, the, the stratégie sans ta tactique est un rêve. De vouloir sans savoir comment obtenir et de rêver. Et la tactique sans stratégie est impossible. Il n'y a pas de tactique possible sans stratégie. Qui, bien entendu, pose des questions dans notre vie quotidienne, dans notre discours, dans notre activité, à quoi sert notre comportement, notre parole tactique? À quelle stratégie nous, nous sommes au service de quelle stratégie? Parce qu'il n'y a pas de tactique sans stratégie. So uh, this is a, a rather, uh, op rather opening question to me. I found this question intriguing uh, to uh, try to analyze tactics and strategies uh, and what, uh, what the, uh, the ethical implications are. Now, my study in ethics, uh, j'ai fait un, uh, quand, une fois qu'on est professeur, on devient autodidacte, n'est-ce pas? On est libre maintenant d'apprendre. Une fois qu'on a un boulot et, et un, un revenu, on peut uh, devenir un étudiant sérieux et continuer d'étudier. Yeah? Et c'est mon, mon point de vue, d'accord? So, uh, the, uh, looking at the uh, ethics, uh, j'ai commencé à lire les, les des marxistes ethics de Karl Kautsky, uh, Renegade Kautsky, as we used to call him in Madison, Wisconsin, uh, l'idée uh, uh, de, de, de l'origine de la philosophie morale, or, or, origine de l'éthique en l'ancien Grèce, hein? who uh, he insists it came after the Peloponnesian Wars, uh, that it was when, uh, when Persia was, uh, was defeated by small uh, Athens, small Greece, and they began an international commercial revolution in the Mediterranean. And that uh, in this uh, primitive, this early form of, of commercial revolution, you, people had to keep their word. There's no commerce possible. If you lie, no one will believe you and you'll starve to death. So l'éthique, selon Kautsky, a commencé avec la révolution commerciale d'Athènes après la guerre Peloponnesian Wars. 
où ce n'était pas un rapport de force, c'était un, un intérêt collectif dans la Méditerranée de commerce qui a lancé l'idée de philosophie morale de éthique, un portement éthique. Now, uh, Kautsky goes on uh, to say that, in fact, animals are very ethical, <laughs> that wolves and rabbits and other animals are ethical uh, with their children. Some animals would prefer to die than to uh, see their children die. That's a form of ethics. Uh, wolves uh, are ethical and loyal to the pack. So uh, there is a, a sense of uh, deontology chez les animaux, a uh, duty. Uh, to perform to your children, uh, to, your, to your fellow uh, members of the pack. So, uh, they, uh, uh, qu'est-ce que c'est cette, uh, cette uh, éthique uh, uh, chez les humains? Et, uh, et comment il est exploité? Par qui? Et pour quel but? Quelle stratégie d'exploiter l'éthique? de nationalisme ou l'éthique religieuse pour quelle stratégie, quel but final. So these are some of the questions that I've been wrestling with uh, to, uh, to try to determine the role of class struggle. Où se trouve la lutte de classe dans cette question d'éthique uh, et, et, et la question de stratégie, la question de tactique et où se trouve maintenant la question la politique uh, étrangère américaine. So uh, this is what uh, we're looking at. Uh, and of course, uh, we, uh, in the introduction here, you have the program. I, I gave a, a very uh, brief summary of different views of, uh, of foreign policy. Uh, the uh, Gabriel Kolko uh, is one view uh, that uh, written uh, in The Limits of Power, his book, The Limits of Power, Uh, talking about the foreign policy after World War II, uh, being primarily uh, interested in creating a world capitalist system serving American corporate interests. So, après la Deuxième Guerre mondiale, le, l'intérêt, selon Gabriel Kolko, l'historien, de réétablir les États-Unis, a voulu réétablir le système capitaliste mondial aux intérêts des entreprises américaines. Uh, parce que le reste du monde était, était détruit. Alors, uh, pour les pro- le, le, le 50 ans suivants, ils ont eu une hégémonie à plusieurs mois économique et militaire. Uh, et et pour, uh, avant la guerre en Vietnam, idéologique. La guerre en Vietnam a détruit la hégémonie idéologique des, des Américains. Uh, mais ils ont gardé la hégémonie économique jusqu'à des années uh, 70-80 uh, et aussi uh, militaire jusqu'aujourd'hui. So this uh, is the notion of strategy and tactics. Uh, the tactics are to maintain a hegemony uh, in, uh, in the world capitalist system. Uh, this is a radical uh, and socialist uh, view. Uh, Kolko was socialist at the time he wrote it, at least, uh, in the 1960s. A second view, a uh, more older view, uh, by Hans Morgenthau, uh, is uh, that uh, the, the politique étrangère est amoral, uh, that it's amoral, uh, that there is no role for morality, for ethics to be played in American foreign or any foreign policy. To have the most efficient and the most cooperative and the best understood system, you must understand that every uh, agent works from his or her self-interest. So there is no moral values that you reduce it to self-interest for clarification, uh, to avoid war, to avoid misunderstanding. So Hans Morgenthau gives a liberal uh, view of, uh, of this uh, of this American foreign policy that is supported by Walter Lippmann, uh, the famous author of The Necessary uh, Illusions uh, that Chomsky uh, 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 critiques. The, uh, the fact is, says Mor- or Hans Morgenthau, is that we all are dripping in blood. Uh, it didn't begin with the Amerindian genocide. It didn't begin with the Aborigines in Australia. It's been going on since the beginning of capitalism. Uh, and uh, and the, cap- the capitalist force is a deadly force 
uh, to which today, uh, if, the, if the statistics I, I read are correct, uh, out of the six and one half billion people living in the world, two billion of them live in slums, and that number is growing. So we have a larger and larger group of sans domicile, of people living in urban slums, and we have a greater and greater number of these urban slums around the planet Earth. So two billion out of six and a half billion is alarming. And uh, some, some political scientists would argue that this is a formula for genocide that as these people become increasingly desperate and are looking for food, there will be the necessary military and police operations to stop them. So uh, we, are, we in our luxury, in our comfort, in our high technology, are enjoying uh, super, practically superhuman powers uh, in, at the cost of, the, uh, of other members of our species. Uh, and this has the way capitalism has always operated. Until recently, the ideology is don't look at that. Look at this. Look at people who are prospering. Don't look at the victims, uh, but now it's unavoidable. The victims are increasing number, and the ideology of capitalism uh, is on the wane. So we see today uh, that uh, many, many people are, are arguing that the, uh, the, the candle is not worth the cost, uh, that capitalism, keeping capitalism alive ideologically uh, is practically impossible today. Uh, it cannot be justified in any human terms. Uh, this, this is where we're at, the juncture we're at uh, today. So you have this 800-pound gorilla, the U.S. military, uh, without any legitimacy. Uh, and now we are thrown back into uh, any ideological legitimacy, and we're thrown back into this, uh, this question of, of rapport de force, of, the, of knowing what you want and knowing how to get it, you see, uh, in, uh, in strategy and tactics. So uh, what uh, we are looking at in the neoconservative generation, uh, the neoliberaux aujourd'hui, uh, Brzezinski and Huntington, uh, c'est très clair, uh, c'est rapport de force. I, uh, I will take it from you because I know that you would take it from me if you could. Hein? So c'est très clair, j'ai le pouvoir, je peux prendre votre territoire, je peux prendre votre vie. Mais je suis convaincu que vous êtes uh, capable de faire la même chose que moi, et c'est par hasard, c'est moi qui est uh, dans cette situation. So uh, we see here this, again, a return to the amoral, uh, unethical uh, interpretation of American foreign policy uh, in Afghanistan, in Iraq. Uh, but then if we marry this to the notion of strategy and tactics, uh, we ask, do these people really know what they want? And do they really know how to get what they want, you see? And uh, here we're, 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 we're concerned with really a, 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 a mentality, a tunnel vision of being super efficient in getting this tactical goal, but uh, not including a larger picture that is necessary to see if you're going to talk about grand strategy. You will get that, what you want, and you will destroy yourself getting it. Uh, so we're looking at tactics compared to strategies here of, of, uh, in, uh, in this amoral uh, context. But keeping in mind that our human species uh, share with the wolves and uh, birds and other animals an ethical behavior, that ethics is not restricted to the human species. There is, uh, that is part of our makeup. And is, uh, the question is, does this ethics serve us strategically to improve our lives, or is it instead a handle that can be grabbed by someone else, our religious beliefs, our love of community and the people that we, we live around, our nation? Can people take this ethical bond and use it for other purposes, you see? Use it in, a, in a tactics, uh, get us to behave in a tactical way that is against our interest, is against our strategic uh, uh, interests. 
So anyway, these are some of the questions that I've been wrestling with and, uh, and have uh, talked with students about. And now uh, we are very, very fortunate to have uh, 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 some, uh, some deep experience in these subjects by authors and political activists uh, who will share with us uh, some of the, their experiences. Uh, and uh, from these experiences will come ideas. And from their ideas, uh, we will recognize information, we'll reorganize our information. So we're very, very honored here today to have people uh, that have, uh, have committed a, uh, many years of their life uh, in, in a very uh, important experiences, and they're prepared to share those experiences with us. Now, um, just to run by uh, very quickly, there are three panels or three sessions in this, uh, in this uh, uh, evening, today's uh, conference. Uh, it will be interrupted by lunch at 12.30 and then move on till uh, 7.30 when we, you are all invited to uh, a piano concert at a, a nearby uh, restaurant, uh, Le Coin Tranquille, it's on your program. This, uh, this piano concert is, uh, is in honor of my dear friend, uh, Howard, friends, Howard and Rosalind Zinn, whom I've met on many occasions in California and Paris and Grenoble. And uh, they uh, both uh, recently died. And uh, this, uh, my wife, uh, uh, Tatiana baklanova Fili, uh, is uh, de devoting a, a recital in, in their memory. And then uh, after that, uh, there's a, a very good uh, menu offered to us, uh, and the, uh, some of you are invited. If you're not, I hope you uh, can join us in a collective dinner, uh, which is at, uh, at uh, eight, begins at 8, 8.30 in Le Coin, uh, Le, Le Coin Tranquille. So that is our, uh, that's our agenda for today. Uh, le, le recital, le piano, à 19h30, et le dîner collectif à 20h, 20h30, uh, uh, 15 minutes ici, dans la ville uh, Nanterre. OK, so uh, this first panel, quel rôle joue la déontologie nationaliste dans la politique étrangère, étrangère des États-Unis? A perspective, uh, a perspective historique. Does nationalist uh, ethics play a role in U.S. foreign policy? We'll begin uh, with, uh, with uh, Professor Yuri Stulov from the University of Minsk. Uh, professor Stulov is a professor of American literature, specializing in Afro-American literature, uh, but very heavily involved in international exchanges, uh, working with the Fulbright uh, Commission in the United States, and then, uh, of course, uh, very closely uh, with, uh, with Moscow and uh, that region of the world. So uh, Professor Stulov is going to begin uh, this session with La politique étrangère des États-Unis et l'idéologie nationaliste en Belarusie. Uh, he will speak in English. Uh, there will be uh, interpreters uh, uh, for those of you who, uh, yeah, good, who uh, don't follow. How many people here uh, can uh, prefer to have a French interpreter for this? Would you raise your hand? If Professor, see, si Professor Stulov parle en En anglais, est-ce qu'il y a besoin d'un interprète en français? Tout le monde est confortable en, en anglais? Yeah, looks like it. Okay. Hmm? Yeah, that's it. We catch up. Okay, got you. Okay, uh, you have to come here because this is the microphone. Yeah. Hey, okay. Yeah. 